let's turn this crank into a power meter. The first thing I'm going to do, and hopefully the only potentially destructive thing I'm going to do to this crank, is to drill a hole, or several holes, through into the centre of this axle. So that the wires from the amplifier, which is going to sit here, next to the strain gauges, can go through and into the where the Arduino is going to be, so they don't have to run round on the outside. And then I can seal this up here with a cap. So for these wires I've drilled a 2.5mm hole and I can get the 4 of them through there. A uh, 3mm would have taken 5 and a 2mm hole would have taken only 2. So that seemed like the best option. Next is to sound down this area here and here to remove the paint for the strain gauges. Uh, it's difficult to describe the surface texture that you need for strain gauges. I don't really know myself, but uh, you don't really want it to be polished uh, because you want the glue to adhere to it. Um, and you don't want it to be too rough either, and certainly not an uneven surface such as uh, you get from a file. Um, a bit of curvature is alright, um, but not uneven. So uh, this surface here should be ideal once the paint has come off. So that's now sanded down. Hopefully, you can see roughly what surface looks like. I'm fairly happy with that. And there's just enough room to fit the two strain gauges on. That's some lines now scribed onto there. I've had to estimate the optimum angle for this force measuring strain gauge. It's not that critical. The most important thing is that the two strain gauges are exactly at 90 degrees to each other because that means that if there is an overall expansion or contraction due to temperature changes it's going to get cancelled out in theory. Um, if the temperature compensation strain gauge picks up a little bit of the pedalling force, it's not going to matter because it's still going to contribute positively towards the output due to the way the bridge is wired. So I've had this piece of tape on here just to strip off any particles of dirt or anything that might be on there. I have wiped it down first with some solvent as well. I've now got this strain gauge stuck to this piece of tape, so I'm going to line that up as well as I can and then stick it on. So I'm uh, now happy enough with that alignment. It's important not to use the cut edge of the strain gauge as a guide because it isn't straight but use the actual grid instead. So what I'm going to do now is peel the tape back partly and apply some glue to the strain gauge and then I'm going to put it back and press it down gently but with a little bit of pressure because it's hard to describe but you need to have a layer of glue underneath to bond it so you don't want to squish it all out but you also want to apply a reasonably firm-ish pressure to make sure that it's not too thick a layer of glue there so it needs to be in close to the metal itself so I'm going to do that off camera because the camera is currently in the way. So now it's time to peel the tape back and find out if it's stuck down. It's really difficult to judge how much glue to put on these uh, strain gauges. I think this one I've overdone it a little bit, so I'm going to have to clean up. Yeah, I'm going to have to clean up that area before I stick the next one down. And it seems to be fine. So on to the next one which is going to go right there. So I've just put a bit of protective tape over that strain gauge and I've sanded down the area next to it to get rid of the excess super glue and so now I'm going to clean that up and I'm going to stick the other one on. So that's them both glued down now. Time to do the other side. Just a reminder of how small these things are. That's a millimetre on a ruler. So I've had a bit of an incident with this strain gauge. The uh, top layer of plastic seems to have peeled away. So I'm actually going to peel this one off and use the spare that I've got. And also give me a chance to see how well it's bonded as well.
Not bad actually. Oh, that's quite nice too. That is quite nicely bonded. Definitely. Well, that is definitely destroyed now. <laughs> Oops. So they are quite fragile things, as you can see. Okay, so I've just got to clean that up because I've now always gone and scratched it with the knife and put the other one on it. I'm actually going to use the phone as a magnifier so I can see better what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to now tin the pads. I've put some flux on them. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to be really quick with it because I don't want to melt the plastic. So I'm going back in with it quickly. Yep. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. I need to get some enameled copper wire and strip the end of it. So the only way to do this really is to burn it off, immerse it in solder. Quite reluctant to burn off sometimes. How's that looking? Yeah, that's that looks like it's tinning up alright. Okay, a bit more flux on it. And I'm going to cut it short as well so that there's a chance of it breaking off. Okay, so let's go for solder. I'm just going to flow them together. And a bit better than that, that's not flowed properly. Okay, that looks good. That's flowed, and then the wire's just going to leave that trailing there for a minute. And I'll do the next one. That's them all soldered on, and I've cleaned the flux off with a bit of solvent. Next thing to do is to bend those wires around the edge of the crank and put a good blob of two-part adhesive to hold them in place and stop the strain gauges from getting ripped off, because that's quite important. They are fragile, um, and then I can wire them onto a little piece of circuit board to bring them all together into the Wheatstone Bridge. I should just hold the wires in place. The strain gauges are going to get a wax coating before I put anything else on top of them. I've made this which is going to go in there. I'm going to glue it down and that will bring the eight wires together into the Wheatstone Bridge and then the output will in these wires to the amplifier which will be on top of here. It's important to keep the connections to the strain gauges and all the wiring as short as possible anywhere up until it gets to the amplifier to reduce the interference. All the connections are now made down here to complete the Wheatstone Bridge and that means this is the first chance to check the strain gauges. So I'm energising them with this Arduino 5 volts which is what I'm going to do anyway and I'm going to measure across the green and the white in millivolts and earlier when I was doing this, I, when I first powered it up, I got quite a steady 1 millivolt, and it was obviously plus or minus 0.2 when I bent the crank. But now it seems to be all over the place, the voltage, um, sitting around 2 millivolts, and quite a lot of fluctuation in it. No obvious change due to the crank bending. So I did face issues with the other power meter and the complete rewire fixed it so there is a potential that one of the solder joints might not be perfect um, so I might go back in there and check that but first I think I'm going to go ahead make the amplifier, wire it all up and then see how it goes from there um, and then come back to it if that's giving false readings as well.